Capricorn. Hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late January 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Capricorns out there. We are moving out of Capricorn season into Aquarius, so I hope you had a fantastic birthday, my friends. Let's get this reading going for you, though. My guides, talk to me. What do we got? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Capricorn in late January, please. And it's still, even though it's not Capricorn season anymore, it's your time of the year, right, my friends? Okay, so we have this Queen of Swords type of energy showing up here. Very stern. This is someone who's about their business, shrewd, straightforward, to the point. Generally, I see this as a very positive card. There's a lot of detail within it as well. But before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the January subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk a little bit more about this card. So, yes, I call her the Queen of Swords. This is an Oracle deck, so it's not literally the Queen of Swords like we see in Tarot. But maybe some of you are connected to an air sign, right? Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. But if not, like I was saying a little earlier... This is a no-nonsense type of card whenever I see it. Of course, it's not gender-specific, but whenever I see it to start off a reading, it's someone whose mind is right, it's very sharp, it's strategic, and once again, no BS, no games, cut and dry, straight to the point, which could be very good with whatever you're dealing with, whether it's personal things, whatever it might be. You just might be about your business, right? No games with this card. But at the same time, there's a challenge here of someone being a little bit too cold. So for a portion of you, maybe you're dealing with somebody that seems a little icy, right? Like an ice box where their heart used to be type of energy. It doesn't have to be too, uh, too terrible. There's not a huge warning with the Queen of Swords, but it could be spirits telling you to maybe ease up on something a little bit. Okay, don't look at everything as black and white. Try to see the nuance in certain situations. But I do like the no games approach of this Queen of Swords. So let's get into tarot now. And yeah, for some of you, that could just be representing an earth sign. I mean, an air sign, pardon me. But yeah, let's get you three tarot cards in the upright. Then we'll get into the intuitive juiciness. And I always say this first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. But let's shuffle it up one time and see what we got for you this week, my friends. What's happening with Capricorn, please? And while we get the deck ready, let's talk about last week's reading. There was a nice wave of good positive energy coming in for a lot of you. So I hope you did have a good week. The reading was titled Big Win Incoming. And I always say wins come in all different shapes and sizes, right? Could be financial ones, could be interpersonal relationships. So I'm hoping you did have a win and that energy could still bleed over into the next couple of weeks. So that'll be a good thing. But we're going to see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this reading how it hits for you. Because we could be seeing your vibe or someone at your wing, too. So let's get it going. Three cards for Cappy in the upright, please. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we're starting. Nice. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. So just as we were starting with an Oracle card of the mind, now we have a card of the heart showing up here, which is an interesting play. Let's keep it moving. I always like when we start with an Ace, okay? Because that could be something really good coming in. Hanged man. Hmm. We'll pull back energy. Could be strategic. Could be plan-based. We'll see what that's all about. Let's get one more and then we'll really piece this together. What do we have for Capricorn? Thank you. Hey, there we go. We have the King of Swords to match that Queen of Swords energy. So yeah, I'm already seeing a little something here that we're going to have to address. I mean, of course, there's a lot to go, but let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes and we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, I look over here at the box. I'm seeing different elements happening. Yeah, there's quite an abundance of water here, especially with Hanged Man. That could be Scorpio with the Ace of Cups. We also have the King of Swords, which is bookending this Queen of Swords. They both have very similar attributes. So it's still showing through here. Whether this is a person or not, like, hope this could be someone planning. There's a lot of strategy here with these back-end cards. So we're going to have to really break it down piece by piece. So let's do that. Starting off in position number one, we have the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. 
As I said, I love when a reading starts off with any ace. This is one of my favorite aces, right up there with the Ace of Pentacles. Now, the Ace of Cups, in my simplistic style, could represent romance. It could represent the realm of feeling in your reading. When we clarify it, it could just tell us something that's coming towards you, a way you might be feeling on the inside. Usually jam-packed with love, all aces are opportunities or offers whenever I see it. And I did see that for you a few weeks ago. There might be some sort of offer on the table, maybe with all the strategy, someone's planning one. We'll have to see what's up with that. But I really do like this Ace of Cups. It, it's the realm of feeling. And one thing I will say, um, surrounding this Ace, yeah, we have this hanged man in the middle. We have the realm of intellect. So it's an interesting mixture. We have like the heart, the mind. So we're going to see how this all plays off. So hope, I'm hoping you're not having a battle between the heart and the mind here. But position number two, we're just going to keep pressing forward. We have a good friend, the hanged man. Now, for a portion of you, maybe you're retracting from something. Maybe you're pulling back your energy. The hanged man is notorious for not being a card of movement. So you see that person. They're literally hanging around. Not necessarily a bad card or an alarming one for a portion of you. Yes, you might be connected to a Scorpio. Some people even link it with Virgo as well. So you see we have the abundance of water energy, which is the realm of feeling. It's very subtle. The hanged man to me could mean a lot of different things. There's an analysis happening here. There could be something that is within your sights under your microscope. Could be watching something or someone. Maybe someone's watching you as well when this hanged man's here. Very similar to the Page of Swords. And it could just be plan-based. It's someone saying, all right, let's pump the brakes. Let's think about this. Let's plan this out. It's very analytical when I see it. So even though it's not action, it's not movement, there's a lot of this mental action, which we're seeing a similarity. Another thing with the hanged man, it could be a card of self-sacrifice. Often it does show up when someone's feeling like they put the well-being of others ahead of themselves. So you might be that type of individual where you just want someone else to be happy. It's like, all right, I don't care if I'm happy. I just want them to be good. Where it could be anyone, whether a family member, a relationship, you name it. It could be just putting the needs of others ahead of yourself, which sometimes is a good thing, but sometimes it could be a little dicey to do that too much. Moving to the back end, we'll explore that a little more. We do have the King of Swords, all right? I'm getting a lot of things off the front end. We'll talk about it more when we clarify. So once again, all the things I was speaking about, the Queen of Swords in the beginning, they reign true with this. Now, kings in tarot represent control of their respective suit. Swords is the realm of mind, and it's the realm of communication, talking. So the king of swords, this is someone who has a plan in hand, right? There's a big strategic plan-based energy here. Even with this hanged man, with the focused, we're going to want to see what strategies might be showing up. Once again, serious, no nonsense, no games, no BS here. The King of Swords could be very stern, very serious, straightforward and to the point. So whether he's representing a certain situation you might be going through, issue, problem, you name it, the King of Swords is taking it very seriously. So there could be something that Spirit wants you to step into this energy with, take it a little more seriously. So another thing I'm seeing here with the Hanged Man in the center, it could be like putting something to a halt or a stop. Like, you might be trying to put a certain feeling or a way of being to the stop, but I really want to dive deeper on all this, Capricorn. Let's jump in and clarify. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, let's get it going here. Let's shuffle it up one time for you, my friends. So what's happening with Capricorn? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Ace of Cups. Let's see what this is about. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages that you want to give to Capricorn, you could drop it right down in the comments. I don't mind at all. You won't offend me. Let's get it going, though. Let's get this Ace of Cups, please. Why is it here? Someone in their feelers? Is someone in the feelings here? Okay, Queen of Wands. Ooh, good. All right, yeah, if you're connected to a fire sign, this is a really, really good sign. For a lot of you, you might be feeling like you're getting your groove back in some sense. I really do like this energy. The Queen of Wands, if this isn't representing a fire sign that you're connected to, it's a beautiful, confident, sexy type of card. And I've been seeing her a lot throughout the Zodiac this week. So maybe there could be something about your self-confidence or even your aesthetics. For a lot of Capricorns, if 
you've been wanting to switch up your wardrobe, if you've been wanting to switch up your look in some sort of way, haircut, things like that, this is a really good sign that it could do something great for your confidence. If you're not connected to a fire sign, of course, remember they're not gender specific. The Queen of Wands in the upright is just beautiful, confident. It's someone who's ready to tackle everything. So when I see it here, like Ace of Cups, Queen of Wands in the upright, you might be feeling much better, reinvigorated, burst of energy could be coming in for a lot of you this week. And that is something I say you should claim for a portion of you. Yeah, there could be a big win coming in still, just like we were seeing last week. Now, I'm not getting any arrogance or anything bad here, okay? And I would tell you, you know me, I, I don't fluff it up too much. If I'm seeing something challenging or a red flag, I would tell you, for a lot of you, there's a big opportunity for you to either regain confidence or level up in one way or another. So this is really nice. We're not going to overcomplicate the message. We'll keep it as is. Let's keep moving over. Or this is someone who was feeling like they were super confident in something. We'll see though, because remember, there's a lot of plans here. There's a lot of looking. There's a lot of watching. So let's see why the hanged man is in the mix. Another thing I'll mention, you know, we had the queen in the very beginning. Now we have a king. We have another queen. Lots of people here, Capricorn. So just know you could be magnetic in this time. There could be a lot of people you're dealing with, a lot of people around you, or the energies of others could be affecting you in a big way. Keep that in mind. So let's go in on that hanged man. See what that's about. Really want to get over to that king of swords. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, someone could be taking a pause, taking a second to think something through. I'm still getting this strategy, so there could be somebody in the planning phase of something or the strategizing. We have judgment in reverse. Now, for another portion of you, yeah, there could be something that you were putting a stop to or a halt to. I don't want to say like, yeah, this is a big ending of some sort, but judgment is usually a card of transformation. It's a card of action. It's a card of movement. So when I see it in reverse, it's like, put the brakes on. Like, I'm not changing that. This is staying the same. And under a card like the Hanged Man, I'm just getting that big strategic play here. So for a portion of you, maybe there's something you're planning out, right? It could be planning a strategy on the next steps in life, what you're going to be doing a couple months, a year, two years, five years, who knows? Like, there could be a lot of planning happening here, especially with this King of Swords here still to come. Now, judgment in reverse, yeah, there is a pause happening as well, a stoppage, okay? So whether it is a connection, whether it's a work thing, whether it's a behavioral thing or something within yourself, there could be something that you were tempted to put a halt on or put a stop to when this shows up. So those are the main messages I'm picking up here. Like, yeah, there is this pause, this stoppage, but at the same time, there is like a lot of planning and strategizing happening. So let's move over to the King of Swords. Then we'll do a recap of the whole thing before we get into the shadow card. I mean, even though there's like this stoppage, this planning, like this energy in the front end is just super powerful and good. So I don't feel like this is anything treacherous. So let's see why the king is here. Let's see why the king is in the mix. And, all right, that was quick. <clears throat> Change of plans. All right, we have the three of wands in reverse. Um, for a portion of you, there could be something or someone that you are tired of waiting on or hearing from. That's only a small portion of you. We have the three of wands in reverse. Generally, this is a big card of waiting around. It's a card of manifestation. So interestingly, we have this card here that's like putting a stop, putting a halt. Like, yeah, we're going to wait. We're going to be patient. This one is like, no, 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 no waiting here. I'm going to keep moving forward. That's the kind of energy I'm picking up here. Now, the three of wands generally it pops out when there's something that's just within reach it's right there it's almost here the fact that it's in reverse is like i'm not waiting anymore but another vibe i was picking up was like change of plan so it's like yeah we have this beautiful confidence there could still be someone like watching you just keep that in mind whether it's work or otherwise you could be under someone's microscope because i feel like this front end is very alluring with the sanct man and this king it's like a lot of eyes are on you in this time but I'm getting this change of plans on the back end like an audible. It's like, yeah, we have all this beautiful confidence and good emotions. Stoppage, planning, strategizing, change of plans, like calling an audible of some sort. So whether that's somebody else, whether it's you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with changing plans if something in particular is not working, right? 
go. So as you see this week, there's a lot of energy around planning, whether it's you doing it, maybe spirit wants you to like get into your planning mode. Let's go through and do a quick recap though, Capricorn, then we'll get into the shadow card real quick. If you kindly look in the box, I would say there's no huge major red flags here, even though there's like a lot of strategizing and planning. Position number one, we have the Ace of Cups with the Queen of Wands in the upright. For some of you, yeah, maybe it might be an opportunity or an offer, but the big thing I was getting here was like a lot of confidence, it's beautiful, it's sexy type of energy. So whether you're changing your look or something else, there's a reinvigorated type of feeling. So a lot of you, there could be a level up of some kind, or you might just be feeling good about yourself, content with yourself. And that's a really nice thing. A lot of people in this week's reading as well. So you might be a little more magnetic than you normally are. Moving to the center, we have the hanged man with judgment in reverse. As I said, you could be putting a pause or a stop to something. It's like, all right, hold your horses. So whether it's a behavior, whether it's a connection, you name it, it's like putting something to a pause. But remember, all lies are on you type of energy. I mean, if you're cross watching, the same could be said, right? There's a lot of watching, there's a lot of watching. There's so much planning. So just keep that in mind. Moving to the back end, we have the opposite of what we have in the center. So yeah, I did say this could be someone change of plans, like rolling with the punches, calling an audible. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to wait around. I'm going to keep pushing forward, which could be really nice. So take that for what it's worth, whether that's your energy or someone else's, just take it out. It's remember to watch all your other alignments. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. And yeah, please take a screenshot of that if you want to look into them further. But let's get it going here. And yeah, let's see what's in the shadows for Capricorn. My guides talk to me late January. And I'm sure you all know I love to pull a shadow card at the very end. Just feel like it's a nice thing to do. Whether it's for you or something within you or something you don't quite see. It doesn't always have to be a challenge. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. So let's get one shadow card. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel. I have much love and appreciation for all my beautiful channel members out there. Obviously no pressure, but let's get you a shadow card. What's in the shadows? Thank you. Okay, the world. Okay. Yeah, there could be a couple of different things happening here when the world is showing up in the shadows, my friends. This is a very complex type of energy. It's a very complex card. It could represent endings. It could represent cycles coming to a close. So maybe some of you are grappling with different endings or cycles closing. It's a very karmic card as well. So for a portion of you, that could be it. It could be a very simple, straightforward type of message where spirit's saying like, okay, yeah, well, there was a cycle that closed. It's still lingering a little bit. It's still on your mind. It's still in your energy, obviously. But another thing with the world, in my personal opinion, it's a little thing that I add to the card when I read. I feel like it could represent the world itself. Okay, like world events, the world itself. So some of you, you might be a little extra affected by what's happening in the world today, the state of the world today, whether it is world events, and politics, I know the world has a lot going on, it could be affecting you or someone very close to you when the literal world card is here. And remember in the reading itself, we did also see like a possible pause. This isn't like a finality. When I see the world card to me, it's more of like, okay, on to the next chapter. So that is the ever-evolving type of energy that we all deal with in this existence. So please screenshot that as well if you'd like to, Capricorn. That's what I have for you this week. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details, the January subscriber surprise. For the January subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful Tarot of the Owls Tarot deck. It's one of my favorite new decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments what are one of your biggest goals for this year that we just entered into? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of the month, I'll announce the winners in my community tab at random. As always, my friends, much love, and I'll see you again soon.